We are live. Hey guys, this is Trina at Primal Life Organics and the Healthy Me blog. I'm super excited because I have Dr. Carrie Dioulis with me today in the house. The energy that you bring to this is amazing. Well, thank you. It's easy to do with you around here because <laughs> the two of us are like, I don't know, we can't be in a small and close space together for very long, right? Things happen. It's true. Crap happens. We talk about strange things that... Strange things. Yeah. She's talking um, to me in her office the other day and me with a medical background, my 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 head was like spinning, like, what is she saying? And it's all about how do we get healthy? Hi, well, okay, let me let me do a quick intro so everybody knows who Carrie is. And we are monitoring this right in front of me. Let me pull it up. Um, hey guys, if you have any questions or comments, please, please, please feel free to comment below because we are going to be monitoring this as we're doing it. So Dr. Carrie Dioulis is a board certified orthopedic spine surgeon. She trained at the Cleveland Clinic and San Francisco Spine Institute, I'm jealous. She's also trained in functional medicine. She, and I can attest for this, believes in using a holistic approach with every patient she sees. She was on staff at the Cleveland Clinic, but now to better serve and better approach patients from a holistic standpoint is the medical director of the Crystal Clinic Spine Wellness Center here in Akron, Ohio. Okay. She is a special, in, she has a special interest in minimally invasive spine surgery, love that, as well as the impact of nutrition, sleep, meditation, exercise, and stress management on orthopedic surgery, as well as general health. It's true. So you have been published in nutrition and... Spine and orthopedics and biomechanics and biochemistry and everything. Yeah. You've got a lot going on. It's fun stuff. I love it. And you know, I get bored. So usually. I, <laughs> she's got two kids. So my, our boys go together, go to school together or did last year. So right. that's how we connected. Right. But your husband they is a do. plastic surgeon. Right. And I worked with her husband in the operating room um, and did numerous anesthetics for his surgeries. Right. Never worked with you because we never worked in the same no. ORs together. But this is really super cool because um, we want to talk about what's wrong with your health. Right. And what's wrong? How do we, how do we get so far away from being healthy? Right? So, Wait, what do you mean? I thought I was healthy. I know. So this is the thing. Well, you're probably healthier than the average person because we spend time talking about it. Talk about the health. What is the health yeah. of the average so what person? Is health that, the health of the average person is really bad because, you know, most people have sort of accepted that feeling bad all the time or having low levels of energy. That's or, life. Oh my gosh, I can't. This get is just done. getting older. Yeah. I'm just getting older. I'm just getting older. I hate that. Like that drives me crazy. Like my whole goal is how do we increase increase health span? Yeah. Like we're not sure yet. It would take a lifetime to study to prove whether we can in increase longevity. Yeah. But we're working on that. And right. there's some science behind that. But how do we really increase our health span? Like I want to live to be ridiculously old and like so we're gonna share yeah. uh, a nursing home room together when we're right. old and decrepit no, no, <laughs> no. We're gonna need a nursing home because we're gonna like be hiking and then at like a hundred and i don't know 40 yeah maybe 140 is a great goal right 140 live to be 140 with our great great grandchildren mm. hiking with us and we're yelling at them to catch up yeah to catch like, up come on what's your problem guys right like maybe then just have a heart attack like it's okay although we don't want to be like out and right. the great grandchildren to so like, you're healthy body. yeah uh, well I, I have issues i mean i wasn't always that's how i got here. okay so yeah you do have issues yeah i have issues <laughs> like everybody like has everybody issues. has issues so you know I, I started medical school i weighed 100 pounds more than i do right now really and you know i ended up getting our doctors self. um our doctors traditionally healthy no in fact our entire lifestyle we're like the potentially sickest people around because we spend all this time studying and learning oh by the way we learn very little about nutrition and sleep and social connections and all those four pillars of health that are important meditation did you ever learn about meditation so i've been meditating for 20 years but i did not learn about it in medical school we never talked about it i sort of like kept it quiet. that can be a topic that we talk about yeah um on its own because right. i love meditation so i would love to hear what you do but go ahead we have so keep going yeah 
and so I got sick and then trying to figure out like how to get healthy. And then for a while I got super healthy and was on the national team actually for duathlon and competed in worlds and did all that stuff. But then it kind of waxes and wanes. And mm-hmm. I basically, unfortunately, genetically am sort of the canary in the coal mine. Mm-hmm. And so if something is off, I'm going to get sick. That, and, that's exactly how I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how we get into this stuff. So I sort of got into it trying to figure out how I could be healthy and orthopedic residency, you know, at that time there weren't the residency restriction hours and it's still challenging, but yeah, I mean, we would work, you know, sometimes two days at a time before going home and sleeping and that's just not healthy. Right. And so now I'm spending my mid forties, like focusing on sleep and food and health and exercise and I exercise less now than I ever did, but I'm fitter now than I ever was. So what does that look like for you? Um, so it changes. So mm-hmm. this is the thing. You don't stress out about it. I don't stress about it. I used to stress. I used I know, to be I did like, too. I have to work out 20 hours a week. Like, yeah, right. And if I, if I don't run my five miles today. Right, because it's on the calendar. It's on the calendar. And right. it's in my head. It's in my head. It's and in my I head. didn't sleep well last night. Should I work out today? Now, if the question is, did I sleep well last night? Mm-hmm. I don't work out that mm-hmm. day. Like I skip mm-hmm. it. But, you know, right now what I'm doing, and this may change. Yeah. But looking at, you know, longevity and mitochondria and my own cortisol level. Oh, yeah. I want to hear about that mitochondria. Yeah. That's a good topic. Guys, it is. so Big. if you're watching, even if this isn't live and you're watching later, please comment below because we want to know what you want to hear right. or you want us to talk about because Carrie is a wealth of knowledge and her experience and the, the connections that you have and the advice is is priceless. So if there's something you're interested in, even if we don't know uh, anything about it, right. we'll still talk we'll, about it. We'll talk about it. We'll, talk we'll find about out it. answers. We'll get you answers. I love, in fact, give me questions that are tricky for me to come up with the answers to, because then I'll dig and then we'll talk about it later. Yeah. So that's super fun. Yeah. Yeah. So exercise right now actually looks like I do once or twice a week, this sort of super slow to failure weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Weightlifting is super important if we're slowing down aging, but we don't overdo it. And I used to run like distances. In fact, I used to say I never had a problem that a 20 mile run didn't solve. (laughs) Right. I I do love that. That brain, my brain loves running. So now I will run long distance for my head, not for my body. Right. So there are weeks that I don't run at all other than I do high intensity interval training where you go super hard to uh-huh. where you're about to throw up. I have. I did that. Right. I did that. You told me to do that. Yeah. I couldn't make it home. Right. It's intense. And then you recover yeah. in between. So what she's talking about is a topic that we will talk about and expound on right. later. But she was telling me in her office one day that your brain loves distance running. I, it's so right. true. That's where I came up with most of my product names. Right. I was stuck. Whenever I was stuck on something, I would go for a run and solve it like yeah. that. Um, but your mitochondria, right. what is the Which, mitochondria? Okay. So the mitochondria, so I'm such a nerd that I literally dressed up as a mitochondria for Halloween in fifth grade. Like <laughs> Fifth grade. Fifth I thought you were going to talk about like last year. No, no, no. <laughs> fifth grade, I was a mitochondria. So the mitochondria is the powerhouse of our cells and that's where we get all of our energy and we have to take care of them. So the mitochondria are actually little bacteria that as we were evolving to these multicellular organisms that we are, the mitochondria basically moved into our cells and those are what we use in order to get energy. They're the ones that convert sugar into energy and ultimately, you know, it's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse. And so we want to protect them. Mm -hmm. And when we do things that overstress our body, you know, so, you know, again, our fight or flight system was meant to keep us alive if we're being that's your sympathetic yeah chased sympathetic. by a tiger and by the way most people function in the, sympathetic in the sympathetic so you your need blood to, yeah. sugar's high your blood pressure's high your cortisol levels are high you don't sleep well and this gets back to why we're not healthy because i think that could be really almost the entire basis of inflammation yeah. and disease is the fact that we function in the sympathetic nervous system all the time all the time and you it's it's it, hard. It's not meant to work that way. Our cortisol levels are meant to peak and ebb throughout the day. There's a specific cycle. Yeah. And so we need to get sleep based on our individual body clocks. Yes. And 
you know, food comes into that and exercise and stress. What about stress? Everybody has stress. Right? Everybody has stress. I have a ton of stress. I'm a spine surgeon with my own consulting company and I have two little kids and a husband. Right. And the husband's right. probably the most stressful. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, we love them. We won't go there. Yeah. No, we can go there. We can go. They That's beat another each other episode. up in Taekwondo. Oh, so our, our, <laughs> so our husbands beat each other up in Taekwondo. They yeah. take it together with the kids. We my don't. husband broke your husband's finger. He did. He and did. my husband showed him the finger and said, do you think it's broken? And the plastic surgeon goes, not sure. It could be. <laughs> it was his toe, actually. No, he broke his finger. His finger? Your husband yeah, broke his, his finger. finger. My husband and it was his foot. He did his foot, foot too, but it was a different, yeah. but yeah. But okay. your husband broke my husband's finger. And when he showed him and he, he goes, the plastic surgeon goes, mm, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> and my husband's like, well, fix it. Right. Okay. So what's wrong with our health? Yeah. So what is wrong with our health? So the four pillars of health really are um, diet, exercise. And we'll talk about what that means because we've yeah. given people the wrong advice for like 40 years. Um, connection and you know sort of our social interactions and sleep yeah and so when's the last time you went to your doctor and they talked to you about any of these things okay that's my question yeah. why don't you ask people that not you i'm talking about the medical profession in general because i know you do you talk yeah. about this stuff but when i say you and these questions i'm talking about the medical profession why as a whole does a doctor not ask you what is your diet like? Right. What, how much sleep are you getting? What's your stress level? Can we look at some alternative things? So the first answer is typically we as doctors do really bad jobs without ourselves <laughs> and have denied all of those things in our own personal lives. Yeah. And that's an issue. And then the other is we don't actually learn most of that stuff in medical school. I can tell you I had like 20 minutes of nutrition in medical school. And it was like, how to, what is a vitamin? And we even got that wrong. And how do you like, you know, feed somebody through a tube if they totally are not conscious and can't eat? Yeah. And like, what's a protein? So I was a biochemist. So I've worked with many, yeah. I've worked with many residents yeah. whose nutrition or diet consisted of protein bars. Protein bars. Right. Like you live on protein bars, which some of them can be okay, but a lot of but them are living toxic on them right. is you need fresh fruits and vegetables. You need water to right. live. Right. And there's no water right. in a protein no. bar. So you're in a state of dehydration all the time, all the time, or you're chasing it down in medical school. We joked in medical school that diet Mountain Dew was like cigarettes in prison because you know, like <laughs> the caffeine. Stash, yeah. Right. You and now it. like you protect it and people would like come and like, can I have a diet Mountain Dew? I'm like, can you give me your notes from the lecture <laughs> from last Tuesday? And I'll give you two. Right. I never went to lectures cause it was too slow. I had to like, <laughs> so yeah. So we don't get that stuff. And then the other issue is like the healthcare system. So yeah. part of it is a lot of docs truly want to help people. Like I truly. don't want it to be, you know, a statement of, you know, but we're not trained to do these things. We're trained to, to diagnose, to put labels on things and then give a drug that impacts that label. Right. So we give yeah. antihypertensives and we give antidepressants and we, and give to some degree, that's okay for sure because you need to get over a crisis right. and, and i think a lot of times we don't get we we don't try to get over the crisis to heal the right. underlying condition we're just always putting out fires right and i use medicines in my office mm -hmm. i use you know some steroids and anti well you have to yeah right and we use physical therapy and i do big front back surgeries on people right you know so mm -hmm. sometimes those things are necessary but if we take this broader approach, you know, I put everybody on a special diet before and after surgery to improve outcomes. And again, the reason why it doesn't happen in a lot of offices is we have 15 minutes to see a patient and getting into these things um, are, can be tricky and challenging. Yeah. Now I see patients often and, you know, I'm sort of because I have an interest in this and I've used it in my own life. I can bring these things up. So I've gotten yeah. pretty efficient at doing it and we do it in pieces at times, but even like medicine. So say you have an, a, 
you know, an acute inflammatory injury. So most pain is related to inflammation. Yes. Even pain from a fracture is related to inflammation. Inflammation is evil. It's huge. It's evil. So why do we get over stuff? Like kids will fall, they'll get hurt. They're bothered by it for like a minute because they have this low level inflammation that they're not, you know, they're right. able to deal with it. Right. As we get older, we've been withdrawing from that bank account for a long mm-hmm. time. And then you had stress and sleep and all the diet and stuff less and, active. And you're, you're just not m- mobile like right. you were. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. We sit all the time. Right. Sitting is far worse. You're better off. I'm going to actually say this. If you sit all day, you're better off to go outside and smoke a cigarette. And then- <laughs> Sitting all day is the worst. It's, it's, they say it's the be, new smoking. smoking. To be clear, I'm not recommending that anybody <laughs> smoke, but just getting up and moving is so important. Like I tell people all the time, if you're sitting, like stand, stand up, up, just do this, move, yeah, move, yes, move, and sit back down. Or just stand up desks. My mother-in-law yeah. created her own. She had right with it. She built her own by putting box over box and yeah. then putting her computer up. And she kind of just created her own right. standing desk like six years ago. Yeah. When I worked at the Cleveland clinic, I couldn't get a standing desk. I used textbooks. Cause I a lot of right, right. 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 And I just like put my computer monitor and everything. And you know, I think I took a picture and it's on Facebook, but so there's all these things that we can do. And the problem is, you know, even with surgery. So if we take a surgical patient and this is how I tie it in, you know, to my practice is a lot of what I see people send people to the spine surgeon's office because they have some sort of pain, right? Well, that pain could come from a disc herniation or it could come from a nerve that's inflamed right? from an inflammatory process, like a virus or a nutritional deficiency, the B vitamins, and that gets in a whole thing with MTHFR and how we process folate and, right. and B12 or it could be from a tendon type injury, or it can be from blood sugars being too elevated. So when your blood sugar is high, it creates these things called AGEs. Okay, go ahead. Sugars that get stuck to red blood cells. That's why we can measure a hemoglobin A1C. A1C, yeah. Or if you and that's a measurement, like a, a long standing to tell you sort of what, so people it don't tells know. tells you approximately, so an A1C tells you approximately how your body has handled sugars over three months. Over three months, now, yeah. there's some nuance to that, how long your red cells live. I was a pathologist before as an orthopedic surgeon. So like the lab testing. <laughs> how many I lives know. did you live? I know. Like, <laughs> literally, like I just, I can't, I get bored easy. So... The A1C is sugars get stuck to red cells. So yeah. I describe like what happens when you give our kids a sucker, right? It's like, I don't know about your boys, but my son is the messiest eater on the planet. And it's like sticky everywhere. everywhere. Yes. Right. And so the same thing happens in our blood. Excess sugars get stuck. It's called AGEs. These advanced glycation end products get stuck to red blood cells. We can measure that. Fructosamine is a way to measure the shorter term. Um, but they also get stuck to tendons and ligaments and nerves. And so we can get iliotibial band syndrome. I was going to say that would cause inflammation. Right. Related to diabetes. Right. So frozen shoulder related to diabetes. So yeah. there can be all of these pain syndromes. So when I see a patient in my office, it may be from their spine, but it may be from their diabetes. It may be from a nutritional deficiency. It may be, you know, obesity is really an inflammatory problem. It's not a calories in calories out moral willpower. Wait, okay. Problem. Wait, you might have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for 40 years, we told everybody, like, yeah, low fat, right. By the There's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to go, wait, rewind. What rewind. did you just say? Did you say? say that again. Yeah. Okay. So every cell in your body is covered in a, a, a layer that contains fat. Yeah. And I see a lot of people who get neuropathies because they've like done what we told them to and ate a low fat diet. Mm-hmm. And there's more to the story than that. Like, right. it's not that right. simple. Right. But ultimately, we did this thing where we told everybody to eat low fat. And if you look at the data, people- They're not healthy. They did, and they're not healthy. No. Like, I was low fat forever. And mm-hmm. I counted calories. I could literally win an Olympic competition in calorie <laughs> counting. I don't count calories anymore. I just eat food. Right. Right. Real food. Real food. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nuanced. Like I've found that I'm sensitive to certain foods. Mm-hmm. And so that some of the things, you know, so I've got a doc who's a physician who has bad psoriasis. So that's an inflammatory condition. We changed his diet. 
we did. Wait, you are know, you saying that but, some skin conditions can be caused by diet? Wait, wait, did hmm, you just say that? I did. Wow. I did. Whoa. So if we're talking about inflammation, again, most chronic diseases are related mm -hmm. to inflammation mm -hmm. in varying types of forms. Right. Like we put different names on them. And Food itself can be inflammatory. It's true. In your body. Right. And that would be almost like an allergy to something or similar. A, but it, yeah. It's a re it's it's an inflammatory reaction. And right. The biochemistry of that is different and it can change over time. Right. So if that's what drives me nuts. Yeah. Do you know when I did a now is the sensitivity would be the same type of thing, right? Similar, yeah. Okay. So I was I was sensitive to lettuce. Yeah. The girl who loves salad. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way I can cut lettuce out of my diet of salad. Right. I know. <laughs> I get it. There but I did for a little eggs. while. But then they told me, yeah, same thing. But I they would love to be able to eat eggs. But every time I test everything and it's always and eggs. In my own experience. So this is, you know, we can order thousands of dollars worth of blood tests on people, but sometimes it's just let's do it and then see how you feel. Yeah. And see what what does your face look like? Yeah. Like your your skin really is the window into what's going on. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. I think I said that. Uh, yes. Yeah, it is sure. your largest organ. Right. And it's the one you can see. Right. And it's indicative of exactly what's going on inside your body. Inside your body. So. I did know, not pay you to say that. No, she didn't. We never even talked we about didn't. that. We've never talked about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like but that. So this physician who's, you know, at a large academic institution, one of the top ranked in the country has psoriasis. We changed his diet. We did a couple of things, but it's mostly diet. We tuned in his exercise and his sleep and all that. Psoriasis for the first time in his entire life went away. Mm -hmm. And so here's a guy who's a physician who said, I've literally lived my life as a leper. Right. And now my, it's gone. My hands are totally clear. Yeah. And so as a physician with your hands, you know, we lay our hands on people, although, you know, we're any more patients will come to me. They're like, oh my God, you're the first spine surgeon who's actually touched me. <laughs> right. There is a whole physical exam thing that we sort of forgot how to do. But so, you know, all of these things that can be related to inflammation. Yeah. And obesity is inflammation. So obesity is a hormone disorder. Calories do still matter. Calories I mean, and exercise do make a difference. Yeah. So exercise makes a difference in exercise can actually make you gain weight. So yes. if you overexercise, your cortisol levels go up and then your body, your blood sugars go up. You don't sleep as well, which make your cortisol levels go up more, Yes, which makes it harder for you to process. What which you makes people eat. stop after a month of training for something. For and marathon. Going, How many people gain weight training? Why for can I not lose weight? I'm running 20 miles a day. Right, and yeah. I'm less and less. Yeah. But you're stressed. You're stressed. Your body is your body stressed. body is saying, ah but we don't listen to that. Yeah. We're like hard driving mm -hmm. and then we don't sleep. And I used to be the one who would say, whatever, I don't need sleep. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Right. And now I'm like, oh, wait, that's <laughs> going to come really soon if I don't actually sleep. <laughs> I've said that too. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. So, you know, all of these, I think every mom has said that. There's no way to have a newborn. And not and not think like, well, yeah, there's, day there's no way to hack our way through that. Because <laughs> like, it's up to them. Who is this person? Somebody wants to know who you are. Oh, so I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon. At the time I trained, I was like the seventh female orthopedic spine surgeon. Really? In the country. Yeah, there wow. were not many. Not many spines. Like, I think that spine is like, but, you know, I trained out in San Francisco and I had my own health issues. And this is Dr. Carrie Diulis. If yes. you're just joining us, so we're doing this talk about what's wrong with our health. We are getting real and getting raw. And we want to know what you want to know about what's wrong with your health. So let me right. tell you some of the questions. Um, yeah, well, so, somebody put snake oil salesman. We haven't actually sold anything, so I'm not sure what. That's yeah, I'm not, about. I don't know yeah. what that's about, but help with menopause. Menopause. Okay. So maybe you know, if you want to elaborate a little bit right. on what yes. you really want to know about menopause, we can talk in general terms probably, For Sure. but if, if you want us to get dirty and, and clear, does that make right. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Then make sure that you pinpoint so exactly. Let yeah. Let it, let, let us know exactly what you mean by help with menopause. What is, what are you really uh, experiencing right. or what are your problems or questions? And we will be able to touch those right better some of the issues with you know again we're trained in medical school to talk about the drugs that you know are available and bioidentical hormones can be super helpful for people so we saw this in orthopedics where you know we know that 
that hormone replacement can be protective of bones yeah, and, right. and osteoporosis right. and preventing fractures and fractures can be super debilitating. I see a ton of patients in my office every week who have spinal fractures related to osteoporosis. That's a whole thing we can get into. Yeah. And, but then this study came out or a couple studies came out and it looked at, you know, Premarin and the other, you know, hormone replacements, which yeah. are not bioidentical and they get processed through the liver. And again, this is more science than we'll get into now. But if we look at the absolute risk mm -hmm. of having a heart attack on the hormone replacement, it's actually incredibly low. Uh huh. And so, but because there was a relative risk increase, they told everybody to stop taking the hormones. And now we're seeing this continual spike in osteoporosis. So the one thing for menopause that can be helpful for some patients is working with a doc who measures hormone levels and can do bioidentical hormone replacement yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can get that back into line. Because, you know, if your ovaries have just stopped producing estrogen and progesterone and then some testosterone in there, then you may need to have some of the supplementation. But there are other things you can do, sleep, diet, exercise, all this that can take a perimenopause. So I'm yeah. you know, perimenopausal at yeah. this point. We're all Me. in that yeah. age. Yeah. And I have no real symptoms from it. And my I hormone levels are good yeah. because they were getting low. It was getting kind of like, oh, wow, this is menopause is going to come early. And then I tweaked sleep and diet things. And what do you mean diet things? What kind of diet things? So, you know, it gets a little bit nuanced. So I had somebody follow me in my office and they're like, Hey, wait, you put like, you gave people like seven different diets today. I'm like, yeah, because it can be different. Like it does mm -hmm. get personalized. Mm -hmm. So if I see somebody who comes into my office, who's got a, you know, BMI of 44 and they bring their big, what's bowl, a normal BMI for people that aren't really so, you know, you want to be in you're 22, 23, that's normal. We start okay. to get overweight when you're, you know, I just want to dumb it down for, yeah, for sure. everybody, old, like, just so everybody knows on, we can talk medical yeah, jargon right. and people, we, I understand, but yeah, some, so right, I just want to make right. sure everybody gets, I don't mean dumb it down, but right. I just mean dumb it down for us right. so that we can kind Bring of, down, yeah. Absolutely. So that you guys can understand exactly what, what we're, we're talking, talking about. about. So 44 is, you know, morbidly obese. Yeah. And so, you know, with their big gulp, there's nothing, again, I have the whole conversation with them about it's not your fault. This is an inflammatory condition. But if I say to that person, you know, you need to buy, you know, a high speed blender and make a know, smoothie, make smoothies with kale every day. I mean, like, we, we should me, make like, some smoothies. Yeah. I have one in my car right now. Yeah. I stopped drinking it so we could do this. <laughs> but so, yeah, so it's about connecting with the person. And so about 75% of the population has some insulin resistance. So if I'm looking at them that way, you know, my first thing that I do with them is how do I connect with this person so that we can continue the, to, to improve their health? And so some of the things that we do are, you know, some people I put them on a low carbohydrate diet. And some people I put them onto more of a vegan diet. And there are people who thrive on a low fat vegan diet, although really it's a small portion of the population. Mm -hmm. Every, Most people need some sort of pro, like meat. Is yeah, that what you so, think? You know, the studies on protein are interesting. And I just feel like, longevity. you know, I feel like when I did the paleo diet, right. and I still follow the paleo right. diet, kind of a paleo ketogenic, which we can talk right. about diet. Um, I felt like I was shoving my face with protein right. just because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Right. Like these plates of bacon. Yeah. And some people thrive on that. But the, so my big point with people is there are markers that we can measure and we see how you feel. Like I don't feel great when I eat a ton of meat. I don't and either. So, yeah. So my diet is like predominantly plants. Right. Right. And then it depends on what I'm doing at the time, how much protein I have. Like right now I'm in a phase where I'm, you know, totally not having any animal products at all. Do you do um, like protein in your smoothies? Yeah. So in a week, so I'm sort of, you know, there's some studies out of Ultra Longo's lab at USC on um, longevity and doing mm -hmm. these, you know, sort of fasting mimicking diets and fasting that's the other thing i want to fasting talk about is great so our bodies when we fast like we're actually better off doing fasting 
in a modified form. Yeah, the modified. Yeah, that's another whole topic that we can talk we can about. Talk, yeah. Because um, I, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. On, sure. on the fasting on fasting and diet because I like so to I try fast. to I try to do like you do it like fast in the morning so I do both it depends I do some intermittent fasting mm -hmm. most days I do intermittent by fasting. intermittent like you mean some days you'll do a partial fast and some days you'll fast all day yeah so sometimes I'll do or I'll do a modified fast so there are some days where I just don't eat anything some of times right. it's just because I'm doing surgery all day and that it's is. just and then I'm tired when I get home and I'm like today was a fasting day yeah um, but there are other days where it's, you know, most days I don't really eat until one or two o'clock. See, that's, I'm, I'm the same yeah. way. And I'll do a smoothie or something in the morning. Yeah. Um, which isn't a complete fast, but the new, right. I love smoothies because it's so, the nutrients are so broken down. You it's easy. Them. Yes. Yeah. It's, you absorb it really quick. It's fast energy. It's um, digestible very fast. So, right. And if I'm going to have, you know, like the smoothie that I've got, it has kale and spinach and dandelion greens and watercress. Like, and avocado. have you heard, have you heard of the daily harvest? No. Okay. So I'll have to bring one of those in here. Um, when we talk about smoothies and fasting and things like that. So if anybody's watching, check out the daily harvest, you can use coupon code. This is Trina T R I N A. You'll get $10 off your first purchase. Um, that's just an aside, but the daily harvest is actually, I had one of their, um, their gluten-free paleo, I believe just double check, but, um, they're, they're frozen fresh. Okay. So they come in a cardboard or just a, like a throwaway cup with a lid. Yeah. So they've got a couple different products. Their first thing that they came out with a smoothie. So it's got like spinach. It, what I like about it is it's a mix of vegetables and fruit right. and, and even nuts are in there. There's avocado in there. Okay. It's all frozen. Right. So you take it out of the freezer, you throw it in your blender, you Fill up the cup that they gave you, not quite full, but with almond milk or coconut milk or water, or, or, water right. or I like to use sometimes coconut, coconut water. Yeah. You put that, just blend it up. If you want to throw a little protein in, you can, and then you, you pour it back yeah. in your cup and you're done. But the, it's really convenient. Right. And it's made so that you don't, it's pre-made. So you basically just toss everything in. So anyway, sorry about that. No, no, no. So I travel a ton and like convenience is important. Right. The only thing. We got to talk about travel sometimes. I know, travel. Too. That's a whole thing. That's How a do you whole travel? thing. It's yeah. too fun. But so the only thing that, that about pre-made ones are a lot of times they have more sugar in them in the form of mm -hmm. fruit than what I, so I'm a type one diabetic. I really limit the amount of of carbohydrate of, right. that I have because right. then I have to give insulin and it's this whole, and with a lot of my patients who have insulin resistance or obese or have type two diabetes, we want to sort of curb the sugar load. So I can have an entire smoothie. I can add protein. I cannot add protein. I can add plant-based proteins and we can talk about the amino acid profiles between collagen protein and beef-based protein and egg-based protein and how we absorb them yeah. and all those things in one of our talks to, yeah. you know, Protein's important. Branched chain amino acids are important, but different times of our life. So like right now I'm doing a fasting cycle where I'm actually having almost no protein mm -hmm. for five days, but then the refeed, I'll have some protein during that. What time. does that do for your body? So why, we, like, why would you why do that? Fast? Yeah. So when we fast, what the studies have shown is this is sort of a time, like throughout history, we fasted, mm -hmm. you know, some of it was cultural, some of it was religious. Some of it was based on the fact that it's there was winter. No, and there's right. No food. There's no food. Right. Right. So our bodies are set up to be able to fast. And when we have times where we're not having calories, we burn the fat that we have. Our brain actually functions really well on ketones. Like clearly yeah. my energy levels are really low and I'm three days into a fast, right? <laughs> so, you know, our brains function really well on ketones and it's designed for that. And so when we do fast, one of the other things that happens is this thing called cell autophagy. What? So, yeah. So cells, cell, C E L L cell, like cells, like we have cells in our body and yeah. autophagy, which is where the cells that are sick and not healthy, actually our body sort of says, we don't really want to support you because you're not helping us. And, you know, again, the science gets techie with this, but the body sort of clears out some of those cells or they just die. They die. Yeah. Right. They die. And, that and then when you refeed, you get this stem cell response and you are doing more rebuilding. So is a, is fasting, does it help put you in an alkaline state at all? Does it help with alkalinity? I know we can talk about yeah. the alkaline too. So we can talk about that. So alkalinity versus acidity, like some of this gets a little bit tricky. And yeah. The body's really good at maintaining pH. pH. It's going to fight to it's maintain. Going to fight. Yeah. So for me, I don't 
measure alkalinity or acidity as much in patients, although we do get that on a basic standard, right. you know, blood panel. But what I really look is how much inflammation is going on in their body. So I use a test like high sensitivity CRP mm -hmm. to tell. Now, if it's low, that doesn't necessarily tell me something. But if it's high, it means. Getting sound now? Yeah. All right. I think we're getting, let me, you know what? I'm going to take this off and let it sit because, like well, so excited here. sometimes this bends a little bit, yeah. but we're girls. We can figure it out. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, we're back. All right. Let me see. That must have been no sound there. I'm not sure. Okay. Yep. So we're okay. good. Can we get a thumbs up if you guys can hear it? Oh, got it. Okay. Got it. There we Yay! go. We got sound. Yay! Okay, we're back. Look, okay. we're so confused. So we've got all these people online. So let us know what questions you have. And so again, so your question, what can people do? So the biggest first thing is fix your sleep. So we'll did you guys hear that? Sleep. Okay. Like, Better than diet. Really, really sleep. I'm playing. When I tell patients I'm playing whack-a-mole. How much better. sleep? Like, do you have to have eight hours of sleep? Sometimes I feel worse when I get eight yeah. than, than I do when I get seven. When I get eight, I just want to stay in bed for nine. Okay. So it's based on to a certain extent, some of your it's genetics. Seven. Let me, well, oops. Now let me mute, mute us. Now wait. Okay. Okay. There we go. It's based to a certain extent on some of your genetics and your own sort of circadian rhythm. Yes. But the average person needs between seven and eight hours of sleep. There are those who can function on four to five. It's actually a small percentage of the population. Yes. There's a small percentage that needs more. You know, the, the nice thing like now, the nine like to we ten. have all yeah. these sleep trackers available now. You can get some of them for free. On bet your it. Yeah, I have bet it, right. which is a good one. Yeah. Right. And I use my Apple watch and that yeah. helps to tell me how much deep sleep I got and what right. my heart rate was doing. And all Do you recommend things. that like a sleep, some sort of sleep monitor so people can get more in tune to it? Right. So I think it's just like, like biofeedback. Yeah. yeah. I use this thing called heart map with, with meditation and with my patients with meditation because it's biofeedback. So 
you know, you get to the point where you get, because you wake up and you don't necessarily know. I was shocked. How was so your sleep? when I started using bedded, it's B E D D I T is the one right. that I use. And um, when I first started using it, I thought I'm going to bed at 11. I'm getting up at seven. Right. I'm getting eight hours of sleep. And it was saying I was getting six and a half hours of right. sleep. I'm like, no, no I am not. I You're lying to me. <laughs> Right. I use um, auto sleep on my Apple watch. Yeah. So, you know, it uses the accelerometer, which tells how much you move, but it also measures your heart rate. And then it can correlate those through some algorithms to figure out, you know, exactly. It's not perfect. Sleep no. studies are better, but it gives you an idea and it gives you something to follow and something to and, track and something to know, to, right. like when you're having a bad day and you only got five hours of sleep, you know that right. it's probably because you got five hours or of sleep. Did you have caffeine before bed? Right. It affects your sleep. Or yeah. alcohol before bed. Or the sleep. Oh, yeah, the alcohol. I mean, I don't drink anymore. Right. It's been years. But I, you know, will alcohol show you? I don't know. Will it show less? Because it shows when I'm in a deep sleep all right. night. But if someone's drinking, are they, do they never so really? alcohol, what happens is it helps you get into phase one and phase two sleep better. Mm -hmm. But it, it, you don't get into phase three and phase four, which so is the you wake up. So you fall asleep. It's a lighter. And the sleep. Re, re, you're restoring your body and your, and your everything you during the, stage the, three the and four. Deep. Yeah. That's when your testosterone is formed and your growth hormone is formed. And you know, all of the healing happens is in that deep sleep. And a lot of these drugs that we give as physicians actually inhibit that. So it inhibits our ability to get into that deep sleep. So if we look at, the most common sleep drug out there was Ambien. It actually may potentially decrease somebody's life because you're not. So every night you feel like you got better sleep, but you're actually not. You're not. So yeah. there are some different, we could have an entire session just on sleep, sleep, sleep. That's good. So the things people can do, they can work on getting better sleep. Yes. They can get exercise that's tuned in for their body. What so, do you mean? Yeah. So walking is great for everybody. Some movement outside and getting natural light. Like do you light have to like, I don't want to say go hard. No. Do you? Yes. Have, yes and no. no. Like a little bit of both, but not right. as much as we think. think. Not as much as we do. So, you know, high intensity interval training where you go super hard. For how long? So it, the studies are a little bit different. If you look at sort of Tabata training and the stuff that came out of Japan, you, you start a little bit harder and then you go down slowly and then there's the, the reverse side of it but ultimately what there's two schools of thought on it i know i'm sort of it, that's okay all the yeah literature in my head so some of it is you you want it one to one where you're you going go as hard as you can and then you drop dead for a minute and then you for that recovery amount of time and then you go hard again that would be and like sprinting sprinting and then like sitting so down. this is what she did to me in the office, she told me your brain, listen, I've talked about this for a minute. You, your brain loves it distance, but you, right. your mitochondria love sprinting. So this is what I did. I'm going to tell you the story. Yeah. So I left my house on my normal two mile run right. because I'm not going to kill myself. Right. So I went my half a mile and I thought, oh, Carrie, Dr. Carrie told me I should be sprinting. So I thought, you know what? The next half mile to mile, I'm just going to do the sprints as hard as I can. It was pouring down rain right. as hard as I can. And then I'm going to lay down. She said, lay down on the ground until I recover. recover. So the car's driving by are going to be like, is that woman? Okay. Right. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to sprint as hard as I can. And I'm going to do this the rest of the way home. Yeah. I did this three times. I was dead. dead. I was dead. Literally. I was I could not even run home. I had to force myself. I did it for probably three quarters of a mile. So I yeah. had probably a half of a mile to get home. I was so exhausted. Yep. I, I was running, but I just could bear. I was like, my mitochondria love that. Love really? That. Really? They do. They love do my brain hated, hated every minute right. of it. So one of the exercises that I give my patients is where we do 20 minutes. So they go, they warm up for three minutes. And then they do 30 seconds all out, all out as hard as they can do. It's the longest 30 seconds of your life. And I imagine as you do this, I know because I've done it stuff like better. this, right. you get better. So right. I will probably eventually be able to do the two miles right. as a sprint. Yes. But for the first time, I just killed myself. You died. Yeah. You didn't die. You're I didn't. Still here. I'm, still still, here. I'm still good. My, my, my mitochondria loved it. Yeah. yeah. But my brain yeah. hated it. I know.
So they do 30 seconds and then they recover. So what do we mean by recover? A lot of times they just mean sort of stop. Yeah. You know, you so can, you can catch your breath for a minute and a half. You can sort of spin. So I'll do, you know, I used to be a cyclist, so you can do it on the bike. Mm -hmm. um, so, Biking stuff. I just got a bike this weekend. Yeah. I haven't so, had a bike in a long time and it's. Yeah. So do it on the trainer. So the thing, the thing that I used to mess up with is I was doing it at like 430 in the morning. So then I could go do surgery all day and my body didn't love that. So now I realize I'm the like, same way I was doing that too. Yeah. I do it on the weekend. And talk, what about, so what about yoga? Like forever. He's like, you guys are, at we are minutes. at 60 minutes. Yeah. Do you guys want us to keep going? Um, cause we can really, what we wanted this to be is an intro, intro as to really what I'm looking at this and the cameras over here. Right. Sorry. Um, we want this to be an intro and really casual. We want to be able to answer your questions. We want, um, we want questions. We want questions. We want to interact with you guys. Um, and we want to do this like almost every other Wednesday. We want right. to be able to come on and offer you guys whatever it is you want us to talk about. Otherwise, we're just going to talk about whatever we want. We want. <laughs> and then nobody watches it, but that's okay. It's uh, that's fun. okay. It's fun yeah. for us. Yeah. And we would love to even bring, like she knows the who's who. You've got a who's who's list. Yeah. And we could. Right. We would love to bring some people in um, and get their feedback. Right. Um, so really what we want is if you guys would type some questions. We had questions about menopause. There was about iron. Iron. There was one about iron. Hashimoto's. So we've Hashimoto's. been all over the place today. Anemia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've been all over the place today and like talking really fast and talking about a lot of things. And that's, I think. That's what we do. That's what we do. But and there's, there's no really, coffee. I haven't had any coffee. I had some this morning. This morning I did. Yeah, it's yeah, been a while. Bulletproof. I had my bulletproof. Yeah. Maybe a black coffee. Black. Okay. Yeah. So I put yeah. a little bit of, I made mine. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, just I did. Coconut, I used to do that. coconut yeah. milk and then yeah. um, the butter. I can't do dairy. Yeah. Dairy's a problem for me. Yeah. But, but I use MCT oil. In fact, my yeah, smoothie MCT has oil. MCT oil mm -hmm. in it. Like clean source yeah. of MCT oil. Yeah. So good. Yeah. C8. Or yeah, we can get into all of that stuff. So super. Super fun stuff. Anything, diet, exercise, sleep. Um, what I'm missing the fourth. What's the Con social connection? So, oh, social connection. <laughs> we need to have friends. We can really. We do. Like we're a social species. We don't do well, but we live in this world of isolation. Like, right? We used to. Oh come on! We are connected. We are not connected. Oh, look! Look at all the connections I have right. sitting I'm here. Sitting here now, like yeah, like in the bad life. Is this bad? Life. Like, is this like? This is overwhelming sometimes for the brain. For the brain. You can't shut sure. it off. I know, and I'm bad. It, well, it's because I'm, we're busy, and this is how right. we stay connected. But physical connection with people, going right. out with your, your friends and Sitting. having dinner, right. and it, th that has completely gone off like the edge of the... the I know. Sometimes my husband will be in the other room and we're like texting, texting each, other. each other. I love that yeah. too. Yeah, Boxer. Yeah. Josh and I will be, hey, hon, what's for dinner? And he's like in the other room now. <laughs> So these are all things that we can talk about and figure out and like the questions that you are afraid to ask your doctor, like about sleep and sex and Ooh. poop. Poop. Oh, we, yeah. We were going to talk about poop. Yeah. yeah. We could talk about poop for poop hours. And the gut and how to get the gut microbiome. And I have patients with fibromyalgia and other chronic so, pain syndromes that we fix their gut and their pain goes away. Yes. Yeah, oh, what? Yeah. We, I do nothing more than we fix their diet and their gut and their pain goes away. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, so we can talk about that. We can talk about that inflammation, supplements, things like that. Supplements. Where there's science, where there's actual science. I'm all about where's the science. Where's the science. Where's what the about, science? um, and detox. I want to talk about detox, some yeah. easy ways to detox, right. some more complex ways to yeah. detox. Like I do a bentonite clay detox. Yeah. I love that. It's so easy. But there's other detoxes that I do. Right. I'm, I'm doing one now. I just started it. I can't think of what it's called, but I'll, I'll bring Josh it. Josh showed me one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, so detox, like, do we have a whole session on what detox means? It and how mean often, and, you know, life happens. So sometimes there's circumstances that happen that you might want to just right. throw another detox session right. in. So, yeah, detox. Yeah, and literally a detox can just be like fasting for a period of time, or it can be doing more saunas or things like that. I mean, and detox gets... Like it's so, such an inflammatory type word for some people where yeah. they think that means like woo woo stuff and you have to like buy this. You don't have to spend a dollar to do a detox. Yeah. Like you can do it with stuff you find at the grocery store. But the other thing is, is, you know, if somebody takes an overdose of Tylenol, 
right? We give them NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine in the emergency room to potentially save their life, right? right? This is what our body uses to make glutathione in order to detox. Here's all those big words. Right? Yeah, right. This is how our liver gets rid of chemicals. So our body, like it's not a woo woo thing. Our body is detoxing all the time. All the time. The problem is Sometimes though- we use we use up all the, the substrate, like the building blocks that we need in order to do it. Like you, it's, I, I described it we're as a so, bank account. Yeah, we're like we're so polluted. Right. Like you're getting bombarded from just the air. And the light and stress and noise and sleep and food. And, and this, you know, like all of that. Monsanto, I get it. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. So yeah, so, we, we can talk. We can talk. So no problem talking. So join us yes. and give us questions and stuff that you want to hear us to talk about. And we'll get more into really nitty gritty details. Yeah. Cause and thanks for joining us. People can do. Yeah. So um, like comment, tag, share this. Um, and we will post, I'm thinking in two weeks, we can do another one. We can, we may have to do it later in the day. We might try and have to like, guys, the other thing we'd like to know is what time works best for you. Yeah. So even just commenting, and don't forget your time zone, please, because um, two o'clock can mean completely different things. Right. Um, so put your time zone, what you think a great time if you're interested in watching. We will be able to post these. So we're going to convert these to a podcast that you'd be able to listen to if right. you don't want to look at us. Right. Um, so and we can um, post these on the blog so you'll be able to go look back and look. Uh, but we want to know what time would be best for you guys. What questions you have? Right. We really want this to be an open forum. Who do you want us to bring on? We can find fun people to yeah. um, Skype in. If nothing Skype else. in. Yeah. Who do you want to hear from? Who are the big names or big people or even little people that have great knowledge? Great knowledge. Great knowledge. Right? That's what we sometimes want. Sometimes the people who are out there like being the evangelists don't always necessarily have practice. the big knowledge. Yeah. Don't have the big or practice, practice they, or practice, practice what they teach. Everything. Yeah. Right. And sometimes the people who have the most to offer are like the quiet ones in the lab and we have to kind of like drag it out of them and say, they know so much. Tell me about your research. Yeah. They see yeah. the poop. Yeah. They see the poop. They see the poop. They know what's or, going on with yeah, the poop. Or what's going on with our cells. Or our cells. Yeah. yeah. It all comes down to cellular health. For sure. And yeah, I mean, cellular and organismal health. Mm -hmm. I mean, because mm -hmm. again, you know, we can look at it from a microscopic level, yeah. like the nitty gritty, or the macroscopic level, like the right. 30,000 foot view, which is, you know, like, hey, big picture, we need to stop eating stuff that is crap. Yeah. And not sleeping and beating our bodies up all the time. We're and hard. It's not, obesity is not a willpower issue. And it's not, it's not, fault. we like gave the wrong advice for 40 years. Yeah. So we're going to help fix that. Yeah. We, we want to turn the clock around, go counterclockwise. Maybe that's what we should call this counterclockwise. There you go. I like I that. I like to keep saying that I'm aging backwards. Yeah. Aging. Me too. I know. <laughs> so go. join us for the next issue or the next episode of counterclockwise. I do there like that. I like counterclockwise. Our husbands have a lot on their hands. They it's do. True. They love it. They do. They do. Our kids do too. They do. They love each other. Uh, yeah. They're fun. Our boys, they're funny together. We'll have them on sometime. We will. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought this was crazy. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Trina. This is Carrie. Carrie. Dr. Carrie. Dr. Carrie and a wealth of knowledge. And I'm excited to have her joining me and we're going to kind of do this co-hosting thing and see if we can like bring you guys some really great information. So don't forget to like, comment, tag, post anything you want to us to talk about. We'll we'll hit the menopause, we'll hit iron, yeah, um, and all that. Spine health, spine muscleskeletal health. Mm -hmm. exercise, anesthesia, anesthesia, anesthesia. How do you recover from? And surgery? you know, yeah, I mean, I I I know the anesthesiologists. We can pull them in here and, and talk to them too because they're they're awesome. Right. So uh, we got we got some connections here, guys. We have some stuff to talk about. We got some stuff to talk about. So thanks, guys. Join us next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.